So we're about 14 days away from the 2024 NFL Draft, and I am absolutely stoked. This is one of my favorite times of the year. I absolutely love draft season. So we got our third Baltimore Ravens mock draft coming to you guys today. Before we dive in, let me remind you our first two mock drafts, our top three picks. The first one, we had our Marius Mims, Devontae Walker, and Bucky Irving. The second one, we had offensive tackle Tyler Guyton, receiver Xavier Leggett, and cornerback Cam Hart. Today, we're going to go in a different direction. This will be our first mock draft where we don't have an offensive tackle going in the first round, just to kind of mix it up a little bit and see what another scenario could look like. So, with the 30th overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, I have the Ravens selecting cornerback out of Alabama, Kool-Aid McKinnistry. I absolutely love this cornerback. Um, he's a 6'1", 195-pound cornerback with excellent press skills. I mean, when he gets you with a jam and he gets you in that chest, you, receivers have a hard time getting off of that. He's got vertical speed to open up downfield against faster receivers. Uh, a two-year starter at Alabama, and we know the Ravens love their Alabama boys. In fact, there's another corner on the roster right now, actually two corners that were starters at Alabama, the first one being Marlon Humphrey, the first round pick in the 2017 NFL draft. And then we also had uh, the fourth round pick in Jalen Armour Davis. And the coaches, the front office, they all have excellent relationships with the guys over at Alabama, all their coaching staff and whatnot. So they're going to get all the information. And if Kool-Aid McKinnistry is there in the first round, I would not be surprised if the Ravens pulled the trigger. Uh, he also put, against, he put up really good film against Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr., whenever they played Alabama. And keep in mind, those are two top 20 overall prospects, receivers that'll be going early in this draft. And uh, Kool-Aid McKinnistry was holding his own against those guys. Plus, Kool-Aid really steps it up in the red zone. I mean, he is competitive and nasty in the red zone. Sometimes a little too much where he gets grabby and stuff, but I really like the way he competes. He's physical. He's aggressive. I think he could be a starting corner in our defense for years. Uh, him and Marlon Humphrey and Brandon Stevens with Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams in the secondary together would be a really, really fun uh, idea, a really fun prospect to have all those guys. I mean, you would not have many guys that you would want to target, right? Brandon Stevens, you know, really had a breakout year last year. Marlon Humphrey, we know what he can do when he's healthy. He's an all-pro Pro Bowl football player. Kyle Hamilton made an all-pro in a Pro Bowl last year. Marcus Williams, really rangy, instinctive. The secondary would be really, really nasty if you got another first-round corner, whether it's a guy like Kool-Aid or Cooper DeJean, uh, maybe Nate Wiggins or another guy that could fall to pick number 30. But let's get on to our second-round pick at 62 overall. I have the Ravens picking up a tackle here. We know offensive line is so important for the Ravens to address this year. We're talking about two of five starters returning, Ronnie Stanley and Tyler Linderbaum. The rest of them are all gone in free agency, or in Morgan Moses' case, he was traded to the Jets. So you got three out of five positions that need starters. We got some guys in the roster, but offensive line, in my opinion, has to be addressed within the first two picks. If you don't uh, grab an offensive lineman within the first two picks, I'm going to be a little bit concerned about the offensive line going into 2024. But we got Blake Fisher, the right tackle starting for Notre Dame. Uh, he's getting slept on, man. And I think he's getting slept on because his teammate that was on the left side is Joe Alt, who's going to be a, probably a top five to top ten pick in the draft. He's looked at you know widely as a top tackle prospect. And Blake Fisher, I think he's getting slept on. Anytime you watch uh, some Joe Alt film, you'll see on the other side the right tackle and Blake Fisher doing some really good stuff as well. I think he has really good technique and pass protection. He has some stuff he can improve on, as most college prospects do. But he also has the tools that you can develop with our offensive line coach and Joe D., He's 6'6", 310 pounds. He's got 34-inch arms, so he's got the length to play outside of the tackle position. I think he bulldozes in the run game. He's very aggressive, very competitive. 
Sometimes when it comes to pass protection, he can be a little bit late off the ball and be prone to oversetting where he can give up the inside shoulder for the inside move. That's something with, you know, the snapping, the timing, the snap and the get off off the ball. I believe that is coachable as well as, you know, some of the technique and giving up the inside rush. This was a five star recruit coming out of high school. Uh, he's huge. He's a he's a like I said a bulldozer in the run game. He's been a starter at you know a big school like Notre Dame, and I would love to see the Ravens grab a guy like this in the second round. The third pick that we have at 93 overall, we have Austin Booker, a guy that we talked about yesterday a little bit, who actually had a top 30 visit with the Baltimore Ravens, visited the Ravens at their facility, and I really like Austin Booker. I think there's an immediate path for him to find uh, some playing time, you know, and get some get on the field and produce. He is 6'3", 240 pounds. He's a little bit light, you know. He needs to add some weight. I don't think he's going to be a, a starter right away, you know, holding up against the run on first and second down. But on third down, he can cause some problems as a pass rusher, and that's where these guys make their money. You know, we got to get after the quarterback, especially with losing guys like Jadeveon Clowney and free agency. I definitely would like to add another edge rusher into this room, you know, to keep injecting a young talent to develop under the tutelage of Chuck Smith, who's an excellent pass rush coach. Um, I want to keep adding talent, and I would love to see one of these guys get added in the first four rounds. Austin Booker's my guy here in the third round. Um, some notes I have on him is immediate path to playing time on third down like we said long arms i think he's got 33 inch arms he's got nice power he's got an explosive first step a lot of tools for chuck smith to work with i also love the way he finishes finishes very violently when he hits the quarterback the quarterback knows it i think he needs to work on his strength a little bit to be able to hold up in the run game but I like the prospect here in Austin Booker and think he could be a difference-making pass rusher in our defense. At pick number 113, I had the Ravens grabbing their wide receiver here. The This is a very, very deep wide receiver class. Um, Daniel Jeremiah, the former scout for the Ravens who works for NFL Network now, says this wide receiver class is super deep. You can find guys all the way through the seventh round, guys that he thinks can be uh, – difference makers and producers on your football team that's how loaded this wide receiver class is so i have the ravens grabbing wide receiver brendan rice jerry rice's son all right so he's only 22 years old still very young he's got a 6 3 210 pound frame he had 12 touchdowns in 2023 i don't know why this guy is getting slept on maybe he's not getting slept on you know, by actual NFL scouting departments, but all the mock draft simulators that I that I run have him available mostly in the fourth round. I I don't get it. I think Brendan Rice will probably, when it's all said and done, probably go in the first three rounds. But in most of these simulators I'm doing, he was available. I had to pull the trigger. He had 45 catches, 791 yards in 2023 as a 21-year-old. The year prior, he had 611 yards with four touchdowns. So he has two productive years. He's 6'3", 210 pounds. He's a good athlete. You know, he didn't blow up the combine, but his numbers were all there. You know, all the wickets that you'd like to see out of a big-bodied wide receiver like this. Um, he's incredibly productive in the red zone. He can make contested catches. He can run some routes. Like, I don't know why Brendan Rice is being slept on, but, hey, if he falls to the Ravens here, I would love to see this pick. I have the Ravens going wide receiver Brendan Rice at pick number 113. Next up at pick number 130, this is going to be a four-round mock draft, just so you guys know. We'll throw in a seventh-round mock draft here a little bit closer to the draft. But we got guard Jason McCormick. Love this football player. Man, is he nasty, big, strong, and physical. He's being slept on, in my opinion, as well. All right, so... I wrote in my notes, nasty in the run game, really strong grip strength. Would love to see him compete with Andrew Voorhees and Ben Cleveland for a starting guard position. Another thing that Daniel Jeremiah said whenever he was talking on the Baltimore Ravens, the lounge podcast, he said that he would be surprised if the Ravens did not pick up three offensive linemen out of their nine picks. So he said one third of the Ravens picks this year is going to the offensive line. Um, we have 
so far in this mock draft, we had a second round and a fourth round pick addressing this offensive line. I do have faith in Andrew Voorhees. I have seen some good things out of Ben Cleveland, but I still want to see some more young talent thrown into this room to compete. Same thing with Salah. Salah has some potential as well, the uh, six-round draft pick from last year. But I want to see more competition thrown into this room and let the best man win. So in this scenario, you know, we had Blake Fisher competing with Daniel Falele for the starting right tackle position. So to recap here, at number 30, the first round, we had Kool-Aid McKinnistry, the big physical Alabama press corner that – I think the Ravens are going to like and have a, a pretty favorable uh, scouting profile on this football player as well as the second round. We had the right tackle Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame. Maybe there's some familiarity there with Kyle Hamilton and you know that system there coming from from Hamilton coming out of Notre Dame. Austin Booker, uh, pass rusher out of Kansas. Fourth round, Brendan Rice, wide receiver out of USC, and then uh, the guard Jason McCormick in the fourth round as well, pick number one thirty. So I wanted to go in a little bit of a different direction with not taking an offensive lineman in the first round. Even though it could be pretty likely that could happen, and we know that's the biggest need for the Ravens, I think the Ravens are going to grab the best player available. I think they're going to get some talented players in this draft. I can't wait to see who they bring in. Let me know your thoughts on all these picks in the comment section below. The picks you liked, the picks you didn't like. I always appreciate hearing your guys' thoughts and opinions. All right, guys, so I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Smash the like button if you enjoyed today's content, and we'll see you in the next video. He ran me over.